Hi, I'm Mark Cook for Kit Planes. If you love your engine the way I love this particular IO340 Titan, you really ought to have it on engine oil analysis. Now, that's one more tool in your toolbox for uh, keeping long-term health tracking on your engine. Obviously, you're looking at uh, oil consumption, you're looking inside the filter every time you do an oil change, uh, but by sending the oil off to a lab to actually have it uh, analyzed, it's really good to see how the engine is wearing over time. Now the way you do that is really, really simple. When you're doing your normal oil change, you go and set up as you normally would, uh, the point is you really don't want to get the first quart out of here because the engine, a lot of stuff will settle in. You want to get sort of a representative sample of what kind of oil is in the engine. So I've already let about a quart and a half out of here. So I'm going to pull my hose, get my sample. This happens to be Blackstone. And then just reach in and fill the container. So I'm going to seal this off and send it to them. Now something else to note that this engine oil is warm. Uh, it took the airplane up for about an hour of flight and got everything nice and hot. You really also want to make sure that you, know, the, you don't do this cold because all the contaminants are at the bottom. You really want to kind of stir up the oil and make sure it's ready to go. So once you've taken the sample, what's really left to do? Uh, you have to package up the sample, obviously, pretty carefully. Uh, Blackstone, in this case, gives you a really nice container, uh, multiple layers inside uh, to keep uh, the sample uh, from spilling and to uh, getting into the rest of the mail. Put your paperwork in there, tie it all up, drop it into post box, and wait for the USPS to eventually deliver it uh, to Blackstone. Then what Blackstone will do is run it through their usual battery of tests, and eventually, within a few days of uh, them receiving the sample, you'll get one of these. This is your report. So here's the report for Charlie Echo. We're going to go over it really, really briefly. Basically, Blackstone is looking for trace elements of all sorts of things in the oil. In this case, they're looking for aluminum, chromium, iron, copper, lead, tin, molybdenum, uh, <clears throat> nickel, manganese, silver, titanium, potassium, boron, silicon, sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, zinc, and barium. Hope there's no barium in this one. So one of the nice things that Blackstone does, for example, uh, besides giving you the elements and parts per million, is they give you a little comment field. Uh, in this case, they said the averages for this engine type are based on about 35 hours of oil use. Now, that this oil only went 20 hours, and the reason was I wanted to get it out. It was still the mineral oil. The engine had clearly broken in, and I was ready to get onto an AD oil or an ashless dispersant oil. I said... Um, the metals in your sample are mostly lower to fit with the shorter run, which is good. The copper is elevated, but that's probably just related to wear-in of the brass and bronze parts, and that's a common find in low-time engines. Truth be told, it's impressive that other metals are already reading low, as we tend to find a variety of high metals in the wear-in stage. So that's really common. A brand new engine will make all kinds of metal. And this report actually dovetails really nicely with what I've seen inside the oil filter, which in this case was really clean. I really expected to see more junk, but there just wasn't much in it. So if we look down the elements that they found, uh, most of the things were right in line. Uh, lead was fairly low compared to what they call universal averages. And this is a kind of an aggregate of typical uh, sample um, uh, densities uh, among all sorts of engines in that category, four-cylinder Lycoming and Lycoming style in this case. Um, so I tend to run the engine a bit lean a peak uh, at cruise, so that's probably why there isn't as much lead. Also, the sample time was lower. So the only things that really stood out here is I had just a little bit higher than normal uh, silicon. Now silicon is sand, and that's usually an indication of an air filter issue or something like that. So one of the things I'll do uh, before the next oil change is to take a really close look at the, oil, the air box, make sure I have good sealing there and I'm not getting any uh, ambient air, unfiltered air into the engine. Uh, so overall it was, a, it was a pretty good and pretty uh, reassuring uh, oil report. Now, the oil report is just one point in time. It's really important to understand that what you're trying to do is build a, a history of the engine. What does this particular engine do? Uh, what does it leave behind in the oil? And you're going to use that as one piece of the puzzle. Uh, ongoing engine maintenance is really a matter of oil consumption, how the oil uh, analysis comes back, and things like historic trends on temperatures and pressures and things like that. I do pull data logging off the engine monitor on the airplane, and that gives me a very good indication of what it's doing 
not only seasonally, but sort of as it wears in. Still a very young engine, still learning it, still figuring out what it wants and what it's, it's going to do. Uh, but this is a really good first step. I would encourage everybody to have their engines on it. Even if it already has some time, you can establish a baseline. And really what you're looking for over time is if your engine goes off of the baseline. If something really spikes, that's a really good indication to stop and take a closer look. So, oil analysis. I'm a believer. <laughs>